uh, that will get them in, but it will be hard for me to like, I'll try to check my email on my phone occasionally, but um, okay, we're good now. Okay, so we're here today to talk about forms at UNCG, um, Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, and Qualtrics. Um, so um, we're gonna, um, I'm always sensitive of time. This is definitely not gonna go over an hour, but what I am planning for this is that we're gonna um, talk a little bit about forms. You know, we'll talk a little bit about the changes that are about to happen um, with the Microsoft 365 implementation, um, but we're really going to go into the back end of Google Forms and Microsoft Forms and Qualtrics to kind of really see the difference between the three. Um, and we'll just like, this is casual as always, um, and we'll kind of just talk through stuff. Um, but to get started, here I am, it's really just for the recording. I know y'all know who I am. Um, just to say, uh, you know, y'all probably know this, but just as a disclaimer, I am not in charge of anything to do with the upcoming Microsoft 365 implementation migration, um, whatever we're talking about. Um, Brown and I are on a task force uh, or focus group, I guess, to like talk through the library needs. But of course, like Tim and Mike, um, higher up administrations are more involved in that than I am. Um, so um, you're wel well, welcome to like, this is a safe space. We can talk through our frustrations with it. Um, I am obviously not pro it. It had nothing to do with the planning of it. No one told me anything about it until I heard about it. Um, but if you have questions about that part of it, um, I know as much as probably y'all know, um, but there is this link here to FAQs about this initiative, um, as well as a place to submit a question. Um, if you have anything, um, you're welcome to also email um, your supervisor or anyone in ITS. Um, they'll probably give you the standard, right? Like, uh, we don't know anything yet until the uh, task they're they're bringing in a consultant, of course, a consultant um, to talk through it. Um, and uh, the consultant will talk through. Um, he's going to do like a needs assessment um, and see, and then they're supposedly going to help with the conversion as well. Um, but again, if you have any, you know, I would go to the FAQs first if you have a question. If, if there's not answered there, you can submit a question um, and then they will answer it and add it to the FAQs. Or if they say, I don't know, then they will say, I don't know. Okay. So to get started, we're going to do a quick Mentimeter. Um, here's the information if you want to do it on your phone, www.menti.com. 16972492. Um, and I'm also going to drop it into the chat. Here it is. And here is the direct link. In the chat. Um, so it's just two quick questions to kind of get an idea of what y'all want to learn today and we covered what we're going to do, but if you have any specific questions i'll try to um, showcase it or figure it out with you um, and then we'll go from there. But that's it. Okay i'm going to slowly go over here. Okay cool so the first question uh, notice that. The link is in the chat, so you can do it straight from your computer or iPad or whatever you're on on this. And then um, you are going to go to www, or you could go to your phone, www.menti.com and use the code um, as well. Okay, so the first question is, what are the main functions that you need um, with forms for your job? Um, gathering information from presentation, webinar attendees, gathering info for project updates, etc. Teaching, outreach, surveys, all kinds of things. Um, great. RSVP polls and class activities, sometimes also broader or longer term assessment of something um, like many entire patron facing processes rely on Google form submissions. I gather student employee evaluation feedback using forms. Yep, a lot of forms. We use a lot of forms too. Great. All kinds of things for the CERC desk. Okay, cool. I think there is a good amount of people here from circulation. So we'll talk through that. Gathering information, yep, 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 RSVP, great. Okay. So the next question, and I think I forgot to turn it to audience uh, pace, so sorry if you have to go back to it, um, but it should also be open now, um, is what are you hoping to learn about Microsoft, Google, and Qualtrics forms today? Um, again, what I'm hoping is that um, you can, we're going to just have the interfaces up back to back and we can kind of look at that 
Um, the big thing is that we're going to look, yeah, we're going to go into Google Forms, but sorry, we're not going to harp on Google Forms today <laughs> since we're, we're not like, we're already using that. It sounds like we already have a lot of workflows for that. And we're also about to lose it um, in terms of our work accounts. Um, so I'm not going to harp on this a lot. What we're really going to go into is Microsoft Forms. Um, so yes, we're going to do that today. Um, we're going to talk about comparing them. Cool. Um, we're also going to go into Qualtrics because yeah, we're like, a lot of people are new to it. Um, Great. Translate common. Act yeah, we're going to go over like that's why I am going to have Google up just to see like if there is an activity just to show you the differences. Yeah, cool. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Okay. Okay. So y'all are already using forms. So again, not gonna harp on this. Y'all all kind of mentioned this, but this is what I was thinking of in terms of what we use forms and surveys for. Um, so creating surveys to employees. Um, some of y'all talked about student worker assessment, things like that, um, classes if you teach. Um, for your own research, right? If you're doing like research projects where you're surveying um, people internally or externally, um, as well as presentations at like conferences or things like this, right? To kind of gather things. Um, registration for events, y'all mentioned that in the um, Mentimeter. Participation from attendees of live sessions, quizzing or assessment of classes or different groups um, and others, right? Um, so uh, there we go. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And let me know if y'all have other ideas that I missed in that list or didn't mention in the um, Mentimeters. So I have looked into all of these forms and um, there, here are some things that all Google, Microsoft, and Qualtrics can do um, based on my research in the last couple of weeks. Um, all are large audience participation, no audience limit. Um, so that is a good thing, right? Because that is a problem with some of the free forms that you do online, right? That you have to like pay per, like if you get into the like larger numbers. Um, but in terms of like a work account, right? Microsoft, um, Google, and um, you know, others, then um, we can um, go from there, uh, you know, so then um, they all have that. So cloud-based um, creation and storage, right? Um, they all have that. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the main issue I see with uh, Microsoft Forms is that they do create a spreadsheet, right? All of them create spreadsheets of output of data. Um, but then um, the issue I see with Form is that when you create a spreadsheet, it's an Excel download. It creates an Excel spreadsheet that's on your computer. I cannot find a way to um, open it up online. So you would have to download it and then you can re-upload it into your Microsoft Cloud account, um, but it's really an export. Whereas um, Google Forms does have that nice, you know, it just opens up a spreadsheet in a new, you know, or the Google Sheet in the new tab. Um, and then you can kind of like edit and use it that way. So that is really the main issue I have seen with Microsoft Forms so far. Um, so you can add visual elements like headers, designs in the background, templates, um, all are mobile friendly, particularly Qualtrics. They have a lot going on with mobile options if that's something important to you. Um, you can create an unlimited amount of form in all three platforms. Um, we talked about the spreadsheet issue, which um, I'll show you all in a little bit. Um, you can share all um, three of these options internally or externally externally, um, you know, so you can make it so just you and CG people can fill it out or other people could fill it out. Um, all of them allow you to share a link, um, which then you can use to create a UNCG Go link with the share link. Um, and there might be others that I'm missing, um, but these are the big things I found that all of them do. Um, so we're not losing these things um, with the loss of Google Forms. Um, the big thing, I guess, again, that I found that we're losing is this whole like creating a Google Sheet option. Okay. So we currently have all three of these, and as you all know, um, sad face, um, we're about to lose Google Forms. Um, so in my experience, Google Forms and Microsoft Forms are not that um, different, and we're going to go into it. Again, the spreadsheet thing seems to be the biggest issue I've seen so far with Microsoft Forms. Um, and then um, both of them are pretty easy. They have cloud. Um, they like have actually pretty similar interfaces. Um, so I'll show you all that in a little bit. Um, and according to my research, if this makes anyone feel better, Microsoft Forms is slightly more secure in terms of how they collect data over Google Forms. So yay to that, I guess. Um, so Qualtrics is kind of a different uh, 
deal. Um, it, of course, allows you to create forms, but it has a lot more question options. Um, so um, we'll go over the different question options. Like it has hot spotting, Likert scales, um, uh, like like scale, like all kinds of ways you can ask questions. Uh, so we'll go over that. It also has more um, advanced options in terms of how you uh, send out the survey in terms of email, social media. So if you're doing like a national campaign, um, that would definitely be the recommended function. Uh, it also has a lot more options in terms of logic branching. We don't have time today to go into like logic branching. I mean, if this is something that people are interested in, we could do like a more advanced session on Qualtrics, um, but it does have all those options, which I'll show you where you can find those in Qualtrics. Um, so we do, UNCG does currently recommend Qualtrics for sending out surveys for research. So if you go through the IRB process, then you're like, I'm going to create a survey to send to librarians nationally about how they feel about Zoom, um, then uh, you would need to use Qualtrics already. And again, it is, it does have a nice clean interface. It's very mobile friendly. It's pretty accessible right for those things um slightly harder to create right because it's it's pretty different on the back end than um, google forms and microsoft forms in terms of just creating a quick easy to use form um but once you get used to it um it's it's just like all other things okay so are there any questions before we kind of start diving into the back ends um to do these things and also these are the three links uh to access your accounts to all these things if you want to follow along with me um any questions before before we do this thing do my pause get a drink of water sam yeah uh a couple of years ago they had talked about getting rid of qualtrics and then they didn't mm -hmm. um any thing in the wind about that yeah i have asked this in multiple meetings and I have been guaranteed we're not getting rid of Qualtrics in the next year or so with losing Google, um, Box, and Zoom. So that is what they have told me so far. Um, Qualtrics is is kind of a, um, from what I understand business-wise, but I mean, don't, I'm not 100% sure about this, is that it's kind of like an ancillary of Microsoft. I think Microsoft somehow owns it or is a part of it. So I think again, we're pretty safe in terms of that. But again, every meeting I've been in, this has been asked and they and ITS has said they're not planning on cutting Qualtrics anytime soon. So we're just going to blaze forward with that um, assumption. Uh, again, with that disclaimer that I said at the beginning, I am very low down <laughs> in the total pull of ITS decision making. I will let you all know if I hear any wind of uh, Qualtrics going away. But for now, I am going to be uh, optimistic <laughs> about Qualtrics staying. <laughs> um, so. We'll do it that way. Okay, so again, I'm not going to harp on um, Google Forms. Maybe I, yeah, I guess I put the wrong address in there. It's forms.uncg.edu. Um, I'll fix that in a little bit. Um, but here it is, forms.uncg. I'll put it in the chat if you all want to follow along with me. Um, but you can also access forms from your Google Drive, et cetera. Again, I'm mostly pulling this up to have a comparison to Microsoft Forms, which I believe, right, is probably what we really want to focus on um, today, right? We want to like, I don't know, that's what I've been looking at, right? A comparison between the two. Um, but to create a form, right, under this forms.uncg, um, you can just say blank, right? But do note that um, you have a template gallery that you could start directly building from a template, as well as you can add templates later um, to that. Um, so we'll just start from blank. Y'all know, um, again, I'm not, again, y'all are adults, like y'all use forms. I understand that. Um, but um, saying that, y'all are very probably used to this interface. Um, so then up here is your options. You can do add-ons, um, right? This would be like, um, if you wanted, to, it's like add-ons from uh, different forms of uh, Google, um, you know, if you get really into like coding and like, you know, logic skipping and stuff, if you were to do that in Google Forms, this is where you would do add-ons to make that happen. 
Um, these are the themes, right? Um, this is how you could preview your form um, and then undo, redo, right? Um, to actually create a link, you're gonna go up here to send, right? And then it allows you to either like do the email stuff, add in editors, right? Um, and then create a link. You can then also shorten the URL since those links are so long, um, as well as grab embed code. Um, and you know, if you were to be like embedding it within um, a website or um, wherever. Um, so the default for this is to um, say it's only for UNCG. Y'all are again probably aware of that. They have recently changed this. So if you haven't looked at Google Forms in the last like six months or so, it is a little different. Um, but instead of um, to change it so that you were to allow people outside of UNCG to take this form, uh, you need to go to settings. It used to be in responses, but now it's under settings and then responses here. And then you're going to click on this arrow and um, you see it defaults to UNCG. Um, so if you wanted people outside of UNCG to take your form, you would have to turn that off. Right. And now anyone can take your form. Um, I always test any form I'm about to send out to a class or, you know, email or whatever in a browser where I'm not logged into my UNCG email address. Um, so from there, of course, you can see your responses visually as they come in uh, to create it. You know, it's all Google works pretty much the same everywhere. Right. Um, creating a form. You can add a description question. Your question types are down here. Um, it's uh, you can add text, right? If you just want to do, uh, you know, short answer paragraph, people can add text that way. Um, you can do check boxes, drop down, um, file upload, linear scale, multiple choice grid, checkbox grid, um, date and time of when people fill it out. Um, those are all pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, if you wanted to add it as um, a, a image, you can add that up there. And then these little options right here, right, would be where you can add a description to explain the process. Um, a section based answer and you can shuffle the option order um, if you once you create a question right like. Uh, you can bold it italicize it underline it hyperlink it. Um, you can add things down here, right? When you add um, other, it does give you the option that people can fill it out. Um, right, it's very um, drag and drop friendly. So if I was like, oh, I want bad to go first, um, you could do it that way. So it's very drag and drop friendly. Um, if you didn't like it, you can delete it. It's cloud-based, right? So it's saving as we go. Um, Google likes us to name things, right? So I'll say this is creating a form, so on. Does anybody have any questions about this? Again, we're, we're gonna lose this, so I don't wanna harp on it. Um, so y'all are probably pretty familiar with this, right? But like whatever forms you have, um, it does create a visualization of the data. So let me see if I have a form where um, it doesn't matter what the data is. Okay, this was all anonymous. So um, I created a form for ROI to vote about the um, logo that we wanted to put on our ultra tutorials, right? So you can see here, I had the um, URL to the tutorials. I uploaded an image as each option, right? Um, other, I don't like any of these designing. So when I go to responses, it creates a visualization of um, which one got the most votes, right? Um, which is nice. You can make a copy of this and put it in wherever, an email or form. Uh, you can export it, right? You can see the question by question. Um, individual and um, so on and so on, right? You can turn off the responses. Um, you can also, of course, um, create a spreadsheet, a Google sheet um, from the responses and um, use it uh, for whatever you want. Uh, the first time you do this, it creates a spreadsheet, right? Um, and you can name it and um, it will continue adding to it as people um, go up. So it is cloud-based spreadsheet. Um, you can get an email about new responses, download it as CSVs, um, et cetera. Um, and then the other settings are here. We talked about the response settings, but you can make it a quiz, um, which would add point values, set answers, and automatically provide feedback. Um, and then you can change the defaults here as well. So other options um, are up here under more. Um, you can get, um, you can make a copy of the form. You can get a pre-filled link. You can add collaborators, script editors, and add-ons, which are again, what we also covered up here. Are there any questions about Google Forms before I, again, I feel like 
what people really want is my, a comparison to Microsoft Forms. But are there any questions about Google Forms before I go there? Okay. So this is your Microsoft online account. I think this is pretty useful. Um, I am the kind of person that when I get like anxious about a work thing, um, I'm like, I want to go and play around with the new thing. Um, so I just dropped into chat. If y'all want to go into here, you know, everyone at UNCG, this is your online Office 365 cloud account. So ITS continues to tell us that right now they are still working on getting everything like ready so that you would fully use it to its full capacity. Um, but saying that everything here, you can start playing around with. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, the only thing that's not going to work to its full capacity because we're still under a Gmail system is Outlook. Um, so I have not messed around with Outlook because I still want to use Gmail um, for as long as possible. <laughs> I really don't like Outlook. <laughs> I feel like I'm trying to be like a team player about everything, but like Outlook, I'm like, oh no, I really... I've had it before at other jobs, um, but you can play around with all the cloud functionality that kind of matches Google Drive as much as possible um, here um, to play around with the collaborative nature of how their cloud account works. So something I've um, heard from some people is that they're like, I have to have the functionality of like being on a document with someone at the same time, co-making a form. Um, it does have all of that ability within here um, as well. So again, this is like, again, if you want to play around with it, um, this is where I would go. Um, you can see here where I have been playing around with Microsoft Forms and um, quizzing uh, to see the difference between the two um, here. So to create a form, which is really what we're going to focus on today, um, again, y'all are welcome to go in here and play around with the other stuff as much as you want to. Um, and notice here, these are the main ones, but if you go to apps, these are the other ones you could play around with. Um, so it's showing me Outlook, Teams, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but um, you can access forms this way uh, if you want to go straight into your forms account. But we also have OneNote, Stream, Sway, and Visio. Um, I know that Sway is like uh, kind of like a presentation uh, tool creation, um, but I, OneNote is, an, is a note taking. Um, I'm not quite sure what Stream and uh, Visio are. I haven't played around with those yet. Um, so we could go into the forms interface and again notice that this is similar but different right to Google forms um, it's going to show you all your forms you've made here uh, it's going to show you your favorites and then shared with me if you're collaborating on a form. Um, so you can go to ones you've already made like here's where I've played around with forms, um, but you can also go here to um, new options uh, new form um, or create a quiz so i'm going to create a new form today. And this is what it looks like. Um, so uh, I do want to note, again, uh, it's different, but not that different, uh, I guess, than Google uh, Forms. Uh, I know, again, it's not, it's not, it's never going to be exactly the same, but notice there are a lot of things that are similar. Um, so we're going to title it. Um, I'm going to call this one ULVLC form session. It's cloud-based, so it is just saving automatically, same as Google Forms. Uh, so similar to Google Forms, I can change the theme up here. Um, it gives me these options. Um, I can make it like cute, right? I can have a video. I think that's a little different. I don't think Google Forms does that. Um, I can change the color if I just want to keep it like a regular color, or I could have one of these like image backgrounds. Um, you can also upload um, a customized theme um, or look through more. Okay, so over here on the right, this is where you could add in collaborators or make a copy of the form. Again, same as um, Google Forms. Um, we'll go over those settings in a second. Um, the other stuff is more like just kind of Microsoft backends that I, you know, like you could get feedback to Microsoft if you're like, I hate this about it. Google has a feature like this too. I know years ago I was meeting with some Google EDU people and they said they actually do review this feedback. So I would assume Microsoft is the same way. So if you have feedback, um, like maybe I'll put in feedback later about like that I think you should be able to create a cloud-based spreadsheet of the results. Um, so that's that stuff. So once you're ready to send it, it's the same as, you know, Google Forms, you instead of responses or send, it's called collect responses. So you're going to 
click that and then it does give you the um the link right here and you can shorten the url right here it also like google form defaults to only uncg people can respond but you just click here and you can say anyone can respond uh, so actually in a way i find that somewhat easier um and the minute you do this make, notice how a tab showed up on the right for my responses because it knows i'm about to share it um, you can then, of course, share it through your email, right? It has to be Outlook, um, as well as Teams. I have not been testing Teams as much as I've been testing this because of this session. Um, so I'm not sure what it does here. Um, but I do think Teams integrates where like you can have like a Teams chat, uh, similar to how you have a Google chat. So I'm assuming that's what it would be if you had like a team chat with your department, um, then uh, you could send it that way as well. Uh, over here, you have a QR code, right? as well as embed code so that's how you share it um so it's, ooh. what a fun log out it always happens in training ah. okay so um to add a question you add new and then again similar to but different right then google forms you can add multiple choice text rating date if you click on the little thing it um shows you it also has um ranking likert um if you click on it it shows you a little you know if you scroll, if you hover it shows you a little um image right um if it says the i next to it so like you know not everyone knows what Likert is. So like it says Likert used to gauge attitudes and opinions about a topic. Um, there's also a net promoter score, which would be like uh, ranking it, like see like the little image of a scale, and then you can add sections. Um, so similar, but different. Um, it does not, it, it, if you add the choice, right, you can um, change this to multiple answer, which would um, do the checkbox option of Google Forms. So this would be like, you have to choose one, uh, but if you're okay with multiple, you just click that instead of it being the option of a checkbox or a multiple choice. So um, same deal, but different. So Terry asked, might it auto save form responses to a OneDrive Excel spread? I mean, maybe that's a thing they can turn on. Um, I, um, oh, so Lois says there is a solution to the spreadsheet issue. I Googled it and I was like, I couldn't find it. So Lois, um, you can unmute and share when we uh, play around with the responses um, or you can do it now. So, um, you know, again, I feel like, see, and they're giving me suggestions. Like if I wanted to, I'm like, yeah, I do mean, and it has other, same way Google does. Uh, you can add an image up here, make a copy, delete. Um, similar to Google, it is very drag and drop friendly, right? So if I create a new one, um, right? Um, right, and I decide I, you can um, do the little arrow thing or you can drag and drop it. Does anyone have any questions about how this is looking? Again, this is a closed session. If people want to rant too, it's fine. Um, issues with this. How do you delete the um, question? You just click here and click delete. Is that it? Is that Callie what you were asking? The whole form um, here. It might you might have to go to saved select responses let's see so if i go back to forms here the interface you um can remove from list i don't see where you would delete it's a good question it never deletes you have to keep every form ever remove from list is the only thing i see so let's see if i remove from list. oh it just removes it from list but i guess you could find it somewhere else eventually hmm. yeah move it to, it just removes it from the list it doesn't give me an option to move it to trash so i don't know hmm. That is a good question uh, as we move forward. 
See, y'all are great. Oh, move, is this where to move to, let's see. It doesn't have a trash option. Do I have to create trash? Who can say? <laughs> huh. I guess I don't see where you would delete anything. I only remove from list. Huh. Great question. Let me see what else y'all said. Um, so anyone, has anyone said anything about storage limits? I mean, it's been brought up in a lot of meetings. Um, uh, you know, like, okay, we're losing two storage options, right? And then we're gonna put everything in one. So what does that mean? And um, ITS's responses so far has been like, we'll be fine. <laughs> so, you know, again, I, that's a question I think we should continue to bring up when the consultants come. Um, no one has said anything about limits in storage, though I was in one meeting where they were like, it's good practice to start deleting stuff. And I was like, <laughs> um, so Terry says I have one drive and it does not auto save to that. It's still, it still simply downloads. Yeah. Yeah. I have also been treating Google suite and box like an unlimited, uh, buffet and storage area. Um, and I will continue to do that. <laughs> until someone tells me otherwise so again remember that firstly i am not uh an admin i uh am not in its but again um no one has said anything about limits and storage and they have repeatedly said that part of what this consultant from microsoft will do is help us with the migration of everything so again that's what i'm just gonna like hope so yeah but that delete question is good i'm gonna um ask them that when we start meeting with these Microsoft people. Okay, um, I am gonna show you, um, I made a form and um, let's see if I go to all my content. Um, we made this one, we tested a quiz. Um, this is one I made and I um, sent it to myself and I filled it out. But so I just do wanna note that it sh this is how it looks, you know, similar but different um, to uh, uh, Google uh, Forms, right? You uh, can view results. It gives you this kind of like visual, right? But it's different. You can click on more details and it will show you like the spreadsheet per question here, right? um kind of deal it, again graphics for things like this um and then uh you can click here you can delete all responses print summary and share a summary link and then um here is where you can open an excel but it downloads see and then it opens in excel i Again, uh, Lois, if you would like to share, um, what is the solution to uh, making it go into the cloud? Um, um, so I was looking into this because I needed to um, make a new form for something and I wanted to be able to have it go into the same Excel sheet every time like Google Sheets does. And so at least what I found online is that you can't do it from making the form first. You have to make the Excel sheet first. And then there is like a section in the Excel workbook for forms that you click on and then you can create a form. And then if you so like if you created the workbook in um like Microsoft Online, then it would be online. So you have to create, like you have to go here, Excel, mm -hmm. and create and then, here. Yeah, and then in there, there's like, and you might have to like go in and add it in um, with the like settings place, mm -hmm. but um, somehow I figured it out. There was a way you could get to like, oh, here it is, it's under insert. So you make a um, workbook, you make a new blank workbook, mm -hmm. and then on the insert tab on the home page, there's a forms button. Ooh. And then you do a new form, and then Ooh. you make the form. Ooh, wow. Lois, 
what a uh, it's very weird what a genius <laughs> thank you google was very I, helpful. I just what i did is i googled you know how do i make a cloud spreadsheet from a microsoft form and they were like you can't <laughs> i was like okay wow well, this is really useful well, thank you um, what an angel you get a ulvlc gold star um i would like to complain just like to y'all right that's not very intuitive <laughs> yeah what do y'all think image oh okay so this would be like creating an image okay so it works the same way just have to kind of get used to it okay yeah like Juanita like just steal ideas from Google <laughs> come on Microsoft um okay well that's really useful I'm glad this is in the recording now and I will um try I'll add that to the um presentation for people who couldn't make it here today thanks Lois what an angel okay really super useful okay are there any other um questions about forms before we move on to qualtrics um hopefully this was useful as a comparison you know i know we're all still learning um comments questions concerns beyond the um spreadsheet thing which we found a a, a i would i don't want to call it a solution <laughs> because it's not ideal but we figured it out lois figured it out so can ms responses be emailed so responses or like the link the responses can be emailed you go here and then um you can um where is it responses collect responses that's emailing the form view results You can print responses. I thought I saw where you could email it. Oh, it was just like, no? Share a summary link. Here it is, sorry. At the top right, uh, next to Open Excel, share a summary link. Copy, and I guess you'd have to email that yourself. My question, Sam, was um, <clears throat> as responses are submitted by individuals, sometimes it's important to get that response immediately mm -hmm. uh and i know qualtrics can do that uh google can't google forms can't do that yeah i think and i was wondering I if microsoft forms could do that i don't think it does it okay thanks from what i can tell here okay okay so i'm gonna go into qualtrics so to get to qualtrics at um i got signed out at UNCG, you're going to go to Qualtrics. Is that right? UNCG.edu. Let's see if that works. Nope. Qualtrics.uncg.edu. Let's see if that works. No. UNCG. Oh, it's UNCG.qualtrics.com. <laughs> Y'all got a little preview of how my brain works. It's on the um, here correctly. Yeah. UNCG.qualtrics.com um it will then you know push you through that login and here we are okay so here's qualtrics um i is if you've never used qualtrics before it will look different it will look more blank than this uh, but it does show you you know like your forms i've been messing around in here a lot so like um you can see um if you have like an active survey it will show you like how many results you've had in the last seven days up here at the top um, or last visit, but then your total down here. Um, but that's just like a quick view, right? If you're just quickly coming in here to look at results from a survey. But to create a um, project or a form, you're going to go over here to create a new project. Um, so from here, it's going to ask you from scratch, yes, or um, guided projects. Today, we're going to start from scratch. Um, and then it's telling me things like what I'm going to get from it. And I'm going to say, get started. Again, there is a lot to Qualtrics and we are just going to do a rapid fire, um, you know, thing today, um, just to show you what the options are. But I do have links out to more information um, about this. And we could do like, again, a whole session um, for, you know, closer to the time we're like 
only using forms um, later. Okay, so here you can do these things, create a blank survey. Um, you can create a copy from an existing project, use a survey from your library. You can create a library of surveys that you can pull from. And a QSF file is a Qualtrics file, right? So like if you're like the kind of person that has a lot of Qualtrics specific files on your computer, you could upload them from here. Um, but today we're gonna create a blank project, you know, uh, from scratch. Um, and here is what Qualtrics looks like on the back end. So there are a lot of question types. So if you click over here on the left, this is all the different question types you get. So um, same as Microsoft and Google, right? You get multiple choice, text entry, text graphic. Um, they have a pretty, um, they have a lot going on now here too. So matrix table is similar to like Likert's, but notice how if I hover over the question type and I'm like, what do you mean by matrix table? Um, it gives me an image of how it looks as well as a description, um, which I find really useful, right? So like, if I'm like, what do you mean by slider? Um, you can just hover over it and do that. Um, rank order, right? You can drag and drop um, side by side, right? You can have that. Um, a net promoter scale is um, a loyalty metric that gauges how willing a customer is to recommend a product or service. Um, you can have a timer, a graphic slider, constant sum, file upload, which um, Microsoft and Google do, um, pick group and rank, Drill down, signature, heat map, hotspot, meta info, captcha, highlight, and that's it. Uh, we don't get screen capture with this form of Paul trick. So that's a lot. Um, I have not used all of these, full disclosure. I have used metrics table rank order. I think I used side by side in some survey once. I haven't used, I don't think any of the other. So um, then from here, again, like Google Forms and um, Microsoft, both are kind of like you add here, right? But actually you're really editing the question type over here on the left in Qualtrics. So it's a little bit different. It is cloud-based, right? So like if I were to, my computer to shut down or whatever, it would kind of save everything. But note, like I can't add options here. I have to add if I'm like expanding the amount of choices over here on the left. That takes me a little bit of getting used to. Um, you can keep going down with all your options here, right? You can um, change the format, right? You can um, add requirements, add validation, and then all of these question behavior types uh, which I just did not have time to learn all the nitty gritty this week about all of them. Um, but you can do display logic, skip logic, carry forward choices, choice randomization, recode values, and then have default choices. Um, these are not on by defaults, right? Um, but, um, you know, the big ones that I have seen used are display logic as well as carry forward choices. Um, I can't think of a reason why I would want a survey to be choice randomization, but if you were using this for quizzes, right, or something like that, then that would be useful. Um, so you can, of course, then preview. Um, it doesn't publish automatically. When you are ready to send it out, you're going to click publish um, and go that way. Over here on the left, you can look at the survey flow, the overall survey flow here. So as you're adding questions, it will show you the flow this way. Um, you can also look at look and feel of the overall um, survey form, um, and they don't have as many like themes in my experience as, um, you know, uh, Microsoft and forms, um, but you can upload a logo, right? Like if you're doing this for like a professional association or for UNCG um, that way, right? And you can change it to floating left, et cetera. Um, and you can change the general style text, things like that. Um, you can also um, look at these options, which show you how you could change the security post survey. Um, I have never messed with these when I send out a national survey, but they're here. Um, and then lastly, translations. So once you create a survey, right, um, you know, like, I'm just really going for this. You get in, you can add a label, right, similar. Um, you can also add um, text, right? HTML view, um, click here, move question, preview question, add notes. Um,
I'm going to change this back to not a drop down. You just click on here to edit it. So again, it works once you kind of get used to it, it works the same, right? Um, so on and so on. Add note, preview question. Okay, so once you're done, you can go to workflows. And it, um, so I looked this up. <laughs> workflows allow you to trigger tasks based on various events. Examples include creating a ticket when someone opts out of your directory, sending a follow up email to a customer after a low satisfaction score. Um, for both the inciting event and the resulting task, you have a lot of options, most of which are inside the Qualtrics platform, and some of which are outside. So Qualtrics is definitely better for kind of like engaging your user after they fill out the survey, if that is what you're trying to do. Um, so then um, distributions is sending it out. So when it is um, done and you have published it, right, you can get um, an email, get a single reusable link, generate a trackable link for each contact. Um, you can get an anonymous link. You can um, use social media. You can get a QR code. Um, you can send it through text messages, et cetera. So again, it has more options for survey distribution uh, than uh, Forms and uh, both Microsoft and Google. And um, it does allow you um, a kind of different form of data and analysis. Um, so I was going to go into, um, let me go into a form I've actually sent out. Um, Here's a form I sent out for a professional association. Um, you can see here that um, you know we added the logo, right? You can see how it looks. Um, we can preview it. Um, one of the things I like about their preview is that it shows you the mobile version um, as well as how it looks on a screen. Um, pretty nice, like right, nice mobile interface. Um, the way people fill it out is a little bit more like click, you know, than like multiple choice esque. Um, so yeah. Um, so this is the preview. So I can just X out of it. Um, but when you're done and you have your results, um, to look at the results, you're going to go to data and analysis. Um, or sorry, actually results. <laughs> My bad. And then it shows you, you know, per question kind of similar to um, how anyone does, right? Um, so it shows you the text. If it is the type of question that has like a visualization option, it does visualize. Um, to export the results, you can export into these three, four things, um, a PDF document, a Word document, a PowerPoint slide, and a CSV. Um, I don't, I haven't really messed with these things, but notice you can schedule a report email. I think that's what you were talking about, Terry, um, and more. Um, so I usually, when I'm doing these things, um, do a uh, either, you know, you can do a CSV and then upload it into Google Sheets if you wanted people to like comment on it um, or a PDF or Word document, um, you know, whatever y'all want. Um, for my research, I think I usually do Word document. If you're using another thing like Atlas TI to analyze your results, um, Word documents um, and CSV files are typically the most useful. Um, so you can, you know, again, look question per question um, situation. Okay, so that's the default report. Notice over here, you can create a new report, right? If you wanted to have it come out a different way. Um, and then you can, you know, take or, you know, away questions too out of a report as well. Okay, this is the report part. So the last part over here on the far right, um, that's is reports. Um, this is you have to create yourself um, to analyze the data, and it just gives you templates for how the report would be sent out. And that's how this works. Again, I have not played around with this a lot, but that is what it is. Okay, so I know this was really rapid fire. Um, Qualtrics has a lot going on in it. Um, but again, it's one of those things in my experience as like not a full um, Qualtrics uh, like expert, but I do find it once you get around in here and start playing around with it, creating it, um, I find it really useful. Um, there are a ton of trainings about Qualtrics. Um, so just to wrap up, um, the tutorials are here on the slides. 
Um, you can do Google, you know, the Google add-ons and scripts, right? Again, if you wanted to play around with this before we lose Google, um, those are like the very advanced part of using Google Forms, right? That would be how you can really edit them to kind of do this logic skipping. Um, here is the whole link to Office 365 Forms, support and help with includes tutorials. Um, but Qualtrics training is probably going to be the most robust because it is like, you know, again, it has so much that you can do with it. Um, but note, you can really go over, again, the workflows basics, surveys basics, distribution basics. Those would be the um, three I would take. And then once you get the results back, you could go over data and analysis basics. Um, so it wouldn't take that long to do that if that's something you really want to delve into with Qualtrics. And if you're doing a research project um, to really use Qualtrics to its full, um, you know, capacity, I would recommend kind of checking these out. Um, so if you go here, you know, you just click on it and um, it gives you the text, right? Um, how it works, how you build surveys, um, creating new projects, etc more than what we went over today. Um, so I get asked this a lot. What about accessibility and forms? Um, there is a link here to um, a Washington University, University of Washington, sorry, um, accessibility review of online surveys, um, which includes Microsoft, Google, and Qualtrics. Uh, you can just annoy, ignore Catalyst and SurveyMonkey since we didn't talk about that today. Um, but it talks about the um, good things and the bad things and what to kind of be aware of when you're using the different um, uh, ones. And I do want to note that Google and Microsoft produce the most accessible survey forms um, over all of them. So if you're really doing something simple and you don't need Qualtrics, you know, um, in that way, you know, you could just stick with keep creating a simple form in Microsoft um, moving forward. But Qualtrics, um, they have information about the different elements of Qualtrics here. I think the big thing is that, you know, they do include a hotspot, um, you know, kind of and like image, you know, like hotspot heat sensor kind of stuff that can never be fully accessible right um there's no way that text readers can fully um use those so that's probably a lot of what they're talking about here um but if you're interested um this article is pretty good it goes into um more details about the accessibilities of all the form um all of them also include templates um so i did link here like the google forms are there um but there's a link here to some microsoft form templates um and then qualtrick does have a pretty um i think robust page of templates so if you didn't want to start from scratch right if you wanted to um, try these free ones right um, that they already have um then you could try that um some of them are paid don't do I mean I don't know do you but I don't want to pay for a quadric survey uh, so you can play around with that here but like this would be a good one to play around with right or like this one I'm all about like using templates I love templates uh, so Terry points out in Qualtrics survey options post survey manage email triggers allows you to email each survey response as it is submitted nice yeah, so Qualtrics definitely does a lot more stuff with email, um, not only the distribution, but the, but like you said, uh, results as well. Okay, that's it with seven minutes to spare. Um, questions, comments, concerns. So again, this was a super brief overview. Um, I know an hour seems like a long time, but three different platforms. Um, I just wanted to kind of, again, for me, I like to just kind of play around in these things. Um, I am extremely grateful to Lois for pointing out um, that spreadsheet thing. I think it's like one of those things that the earlier we know, the better, right? We should start telling our colleagues. Um, Y'all can use your Office 365 account right now um, and play around with it. Again, from what I understand, we are still not in full Office 365 capacity, you know, like, at its full capacity. And I'm not sure what that means. Someone did tell me the other day that the provost has started meeting with people on Teams, which I would thought wasn't, you know, I thought we weren't doing that yet. But if y'all wanna go in here and start playing around, um, there is a Teams option over here um, that's cloud-based. Is it gonna hurt me that I'm like in Zoom going to Teams, <laughs> who can say? Um, that is just gonna show you the cloud version of Teams that you might kind of notice from your, um, phone calls, right? Um, but it notice that it does have a chat option, a calendar option. Um, you, I'm not gonna, you know, you can create a team. I, again, I haven't done this yet, but if people are like into playing around with it, here it is. For me, I'm taking one thing at a time. And this week I, I did Forbes. 
<laughs> um, so Terry points out, I hope the consultants can figure out a way to transfer Google Forms to Microsoft Forms so that we don't, they don't have to all be recreated. Yes. Yes. I mean, my understanding is that's a big part of the consultant's jobs is that they are going to do like a migration. And I don't know if that means like piece by piece, like if they're going to go into forms, transfer, you know, whatever. But like you said, I mean, ooh, I got a lot of forms. But I also, I, I just, I got a lot. I got a lot of stuff in Google Drive. But don't we all? I'm not special. So yeah, I, I'm just hoping, I'm just going to be hopeful. Like Lois said, we're all in this together. So like, I think sessions like this are good, right? Because we can all kind of think through the stuff. Um, remember, I mean, I think a lot of people have started filling it out, but Brown um, did send out that form um, to, to y'all, the library, so that um, we're going to meet with, um, I think the consultants, not this Friday, but the next, and we're going to bring up that form and say like, hey, here's what our people, people in the library need to do. Uh, so definitely fill out that form and let us know. Um, the big concerns I've seen so far, of course, are like um, the, alter the ones that don't have alternatives that I've seen so far are like Google Sites. We're, we're trying to figure out what that means and what Microsoft's going to tell us to do about that. Um, and there's other stuff too, but the Google Site one is going to be, I think, a, a, a bigger challenge. Like thinking about like behind the stacks, uh, BTS and all the great work Michelle has done with that. Um, we definitely want to make sure that that continues. YouTube. But I, you know, the YouTube thing, when people get really panicked about that, I think they might end up still continuing to buy a YouTube account through Google, just not like a Google EDU account. So stay tuned. Okay. Any other questions, comments? I know people like probably are busy today as we head towards Halloween. I have young children. So I'm like, right now my timeline is like, I'm heading towards Halloween. Great. So I'm glad that this was informative, if not just to like open up the back end and look at the different interfaces, all three together. Um, let me know if y'all want someone from ITS to come and do like a kind of more advanced Qualtrics session. This was, of course, as you saw, very intro because uh, we were comparing it to Forms and uh, sorry, to Google and Microsoft Forms. Um, so if you want that, if you're interested in it, I can contact ITS and they can they can um, come. That would be, yeah, Terry said YouTube is supposed to remain. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That was the impression I got. So yeah, well, great. Thank you all for coming. Um, you'll get a recording, the recordings on the ULBL site. Um, I don't think we have another one scheduled. Um, I'll do another one of these in November, um, but then we have one that I haven't promoted yet, but just to keep you informed in December, someone from um, Yale is gonna talk to us about um, emojis and creating emojis and like how the uh, emojis get approved. I think that's going to be really fun. So it's someone who like works for emojis. Yes. Um, so we're really excited to have her. She's from Yale. Like she's from outside UNCG and unpaid fun talk um, about emojis, which like who doesn't love emojis? I do. Um, so anyway, stay, stay tuned for that. That's going to be in December. Um, we wanted people to be like, you know, hopefully as many people as possible to come um, and see her talk. Um, so, okay, y'all, um, let me know if y'all have any sessions you want to do in November or December um, or in spring. We um, are scheduling out. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.